honestly. I wanted to make a grim and epic intro with these minis, but I had this random thought of these guys behaving like the hyenas in The Lion King yesterday. So, here goes. Man, that lousy Mufasa. I won't be able to sit for a week. <laughs> it's not funny, Ed. <laughs> hey, shut up! <laughs> Will you knock it off? <laughs> well, he started it. <laughs> Greetings, ladies and laddies, and welcome back to the realms of this cursed city. In today's episode of our speed painting series, we'll have a look at Raduka's most dangerous enforcers, the Verkus Bloodborne. They were once noblemen and women of Ulfenkarn, but when Raduka brought the city to its knees, some sought to swear their allegiance to him escaping the certainty of death. Those who managed to control the curse were reborn as bloodthirsty vampires, possessing the strength of a Varkskyr and the swordsmanship of their former lives as nobility. Quite fitting lore for these awesome looking miniatures, but we're not here to listen to ghost stories. Pick up your brushes, ready your paints, and without further ado, Let's get going! Because we want the stone to have a realistic looking texture, and we'll surely make use of a lot of messy dry brushing, we will start off with the ruined pillars first and paint the vampires themselves afterwards. Let's start with a blue tinted dark grey. I'll be giving all of these pillars the same look of classic dark stone, aiming for more coherency today. If you're interested in other looks, I highly recommend my Mysterious Object Speed Paint, where I showcase four different but very easy stone textures like sandstone, granite, and so on. Anyway, after all of the pillars have their first base coat, it's already time for the dry brush. We'll start off with a dark grey for the foundation, and after that, bring the details to life with a lighter grey. Be sure to highlight especially the most outward facing edges and the arches on top, as they define the pillar's shape the most. After this, we can leave the pillars alone for now and turn our attention to the vampires. I'll treat them very similar to the Varkskyr, starting off with their fur. For the base layer, we'll use a dark mustard yellow and then continue with a pale brown, painting it more towards the center of the tufts of hair and leaving plenty of the formerly painted areas untouched. The last color in this gradient will be a very dark grey. Make sure to also paint these little hairs on the punk vampire's shoulder, as they are quite easy to miss. Alright, now we quickly establish the highlights by dry brushing a very light beige over the fur, catching all of its single strands of hair and then fill in the shadows with a dark brown wash. The beige highlights will still pierce through this wash after it dries, so no worries. Okay! Having the messy fur out of the way, we can start painting the skin. I mixed this color myself with two parts of white and beige and a single dash of grey. But if you're a lucky git and own Palette Witch Flesh from Citadel, I'd recommend you use that. After every bit of skin is painted, we take out that mustard yellow again and lightly paint the canine feet with it, not going over the ankle. Now we take a pale brown and paint a little more towards the paws and then finish it off with a dark burgundy on the paws themselves. Because I want the vampires to look as dark as possible, I chose a non-metallic metal approach for the armor. Take a dark grey, thin it with water and then paint the armor with it. The paint should behave like a contrast color, seeking out the recesses more than the rest, but still providing a nice cover. I don't really know why, but I'd like the punk vampire to have a bronze armor, for which we can use that mustard yellow from earlier again. 
Leaving that to dry, we still put our true metallic metals to use and paint their blades in a dark silver and the guard in a bright gold. As I felt really fancy about these formerly aristocratic weapons, I decided to paint their grips in a saturated green. The hair was actually the one feature I looked for inspiration the most, as just painting them in a monotone brown or black seemed just not fancy enough for me. So, I decided to blend a bit more blue into it halfway down, getting increasingly brighter toward the end of their hair, because the only thing that is more dangerous than a vampire is a vampire with main protagonist hair. <laughs> and if you think that was crazy, you'll declare me outright insane when I tell you that we will take a red wash for the skin. I'm just not a fan of the yellow tinted flesh from Games Workshop and wanted to try out red as an alternative. When doing this, make sure to thin the wash with water and apply it swiftly to prevent it from settling down too early, creating nasty tight marks. If you think this is not for you, I really don't blame you. In that case, I recommend having a look at my Varkskyr video, where I use a black wash for the vampire skin instead. After washing the skin, we take a brown wash for the bronze armor and a black wash for the dark armor. While we're waiting for the wash to dry, we can take care of the base elements. For the roots, we take a pale brown and for the skulls, a dark beige. You can paint the candles in whatever color you like, I'm just going for a classic white wax. Also, don't forget the chain hanging by the side of one of the pillars. For the very ground itself, we start off with the texture paint dull and mud, and follow it up with a light beige dry brush. Then we take care of the cobblestones by painting them in the same dark grey we used for the stone pillars. After that, we take a black wash and heavily schlub it on the stone pillars, and a brown wash for the ground. Last but not least, we give the bases a smooth black trim, and we are done with the speed paint. Well, I think we absolutely did succeed in giving these minis an epic paint job. But even for a speed paint, it took quite a long time to get there, something that I vastly underestimated. When I saw these minis at first, I was like, oh yeah, big stone pillars, lots of skin, a few details, easy peasy lemon squeezy. But in actuality, it's more like difficult, Difficult, lemon, difficult. Rough stone, pale skin, metallic gear like armor and weapons, but also fur and hair. All this on top of these lovely dynamic poses and very nice casts, and you've got a weekend full of challenges. <laughs> Though this may sound quite intimidating, in actuality, I think these minis are perfect to learn and practice a lot of different techniques on a small scale. So don't be discouraged, but much rather spurred on when approaching these minis. Just keep in mind that they will take the time they need, and don't try to rush it. <laughs> okay, all this painting philosophy aside, I think there is still more room for improvements, and in the next few minutes I'd like to show you guys a few optional steps on how to further upgrade these already epic looking vampires. Alright, the first thing I'd like to do is to give the skin a little more polish. I was a little careless and have some tight marks to get rid of. Also, I think we should knock down the red tint after the wash, which may sound a little ironic, but remember that we mainly did it to get some shadows in the recesses. We pick out the different muscles and especially the facial features like the nose, and the flashy eyebrows. Next we take a medium dark grey and edge highlight the hair on the most prominent streaks. You don't have to highlight everything here, and I would even say that less is definitely more. Turning our attention to the faces again, we take a Bordeaux red and carefully sketch some patterns like war paint onto their faces. I just let my mind run free here and gave every vampire their distinct markings. Here you can really do whatever you want, from rather simple patterns to the most detailed tattoos. 
It's really up to you. For the eyes, I took a bright white. And even though it worked fine off camera, I really couldn't do it on camera. And after a few attempts, I just got a little frustrated. <clears throat> we used the same white to pick up the fangs before picking out the claws on their paws with a pitch black paint. Moving on to the armor, I think that a little bit of easy non-metallic metal action could look really nice. Take a light beige and edge highlight the most prominent parts of the bronze armor. For the dark steel, we repeat this step with a light grey, and after that, we take a pure white and dot it onto a few spots where the light might reflect from the most. After the metallic parts are dealt with, we can take a light beige and dot the edge highlight onto the brown leather, making it look like the material is battle-worn and already chipping. Alright, and that's it for the vampires. For highlighting the stone pillars, we take a light grey and trace the most outward facing edges, as well as the underside of the rectangles. For the arches and broken off debris, I would recommend to just dry brush it over, as these round shapes are a lot more difficult to deal with, and I find that this dry brush just gives the stone a way more natural look. After the pillars are all finished, we just need to highlight the skulls with a light beige, and the dripping wax of the candles with a pure white again, and we are done. Oh yeah, would you look at that. I think the Bloodborne look really amazing and definitely capable of ridding Radhika of all those that dare to oppose him. There were a lot of things that I was unsure about with these minis, like the red wash for example or the hair color. Maybe blue wasn't the right choice and a red or violet would have fit better? What do you think? I'd be really curious what your ideas on color schemes regarding these minis are. So if you'd like, share your thoughts in the comment section, I'd really like to know. However, I'm really pleased with how the pillars and the armor turned out, especially the bronze one. If you're following me along this project with your own miniatures at home, you will have 38 of the 60 Cursed City miniatures finished by now. And as always, I have a guide listing all of the exact paints that I used for this paint job down in the description of the video. In the next episode of our speed painting series, we will paint Watch Captain Halgrim, commander of the Ulfen Watch, and another traitor who fled into Radhika's reign. And if you would like to see his paint job as well as the other upcoming Curse City miniatures, feel free to hit the subscribe button. As I am very looking forward to seeing you again in my next video. Until then, take care.